in, in both of these cases, I would argue that CTFs are a lot harder than real world. I really do believe that. And I've had coworkers that have, that, that cannot, like, they could not solve these CTFs half as well as, like, probably all of you guys in my chat right now. And, and they're doing the job. And they're staying at the company. And, and the manager says they're doing a great job. Real life engagements are hard in a different way. What would make, typically what would make a real life engagement hard is the scoping of it. So you just have like a lot more stuff to look at generally. Like if you are pen testing a web app, let's say, that web app might be like, you know, 50 pages, 100 different pages with like 100 parameters, you know, like 10 parameters per page or something, something crazy, right? Whereas on a CTF, it's, it's probably gonna be a pretty small site and most of it's gonna be uh, third party code because the box creator is not going to sit there and create like 50 web pages custom with like a bunch of custom fields. Whereas a company absolutely will have a custom website for their employees or their, um, you know, or, or whatever, right. Or for their customers, they'll absolutely have a team of developers creating a custom website. And that custom website is where the vulnerabilities can be right. Because in third party, it's pretty self-explanatory whether if there's a vulnerability in that or not, you can just look it up. You can just see, Hey, is there any CVE on this version of Drupal or WordPress or whatever, right? And you can see if someone found a vulnerability or not. Whereas if it's custom code, there is no uh, database you can check against that. You got to find the vulnerability yourself, right? And so that would make it harder. I would say specifically on the web, on the web side of the house is where things get more complex. Maybe you could say in the networking side too, if you're doing an internal engagement that's real world, maybe you have a hundred IPs or something. Couldn't happen. But I mean, how much harder does that really make it? Now you have 100 times the chance that you can find a vulnerability. If you think about it in a certain sense, you have like a hundred percent or a hundred times the chance of finding something compared to a CTF, right? You got one box. Uh, I'm not a pen tester yet, but I would think the hard part would be getting out of the CTF mindset. Uh, that is true. That's a good point, um, L30. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That is true. There is a certain mindset shift as well when it comes to the real world versus pen, uh, versus CTFs, uh, where you know you're going to find something versus unknown on a real engagement. That's part of it. Where I was going with it was this. Another part, another component of the CTF mindset is that you, a lot of people that just do CTFs, part of their CTF mindset is being really fixated on code execution. That's one of the things you have to break out of when you go from CTFs to real world. But one of the shifts that you need to make is um, in your mindset of instead of just looking for code execution, to train yourself to look for all vulnerabilities, even if they don't necessarily lead to code execution. Because here's the thing, a lot of it is pretty contextual based on what does the company sell? What do they value, right? So uh, as an example, when I work for General Motors, the car company, they really cared about like their schematics and stuff like that, right? Their data, of, like their blueprints on their new cars and stuff like that. And if a attacker went in and exfiltrated that data and sold it to other car companies or something, then that would be something they'd be very concerned about. It'd be a huge uh, rep, uh, damage to, to them as a business. So that's an example of something that has nothing to do with remote code execution. Well, I mean, it could, right? They could use that to pivot around other environments, but let's just say they're able to access that server somehow. And from there, exfiltrating that data might not even require code execution. Maybe they get like um, a path traversal vulnerability, right? Where they can read arbitrary files on the file system and they just read off those files and they exfiltrate them and they don't even need code execution. If you're in the CTF mindset, you're only thinking about code execution because it's like, oh, you know, you're so in the habit of, oh, get code execution, then privilege escalate and get root, get admin. You know, same thing on the Active Directory side. A lot of people are so fixated on domain admin uh, as a red teamer, I had to learn that a lot of times it's better if you don't even go for domain admin. You can be more stealthy, right? Sometimes you need it. Sometimes it's worth it. But sometimes it's not the, the number one priority, especially when you're emulating an adversary. Um, so that that's the thing as well. But a lot of it, yeah, a lot of it kind of depends on the company, what they value and stuff like that. Uh, 
uh, would love to hear your point of view. Um, I'm fine. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was addressing. But that's true too. Like uh, L30 brings up. You know, there's a difference when you know you're going to find something versus the unknown on a real engagement. But here's the thing. You can always find something. Um, now, there are times where pen testers don't find anything on an assessment. It's very, very rare. I think it happened to me once or twice in my career, in my entire career. But it does happen. It does happen. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, usually, you can at least find a lower informational finding. So like, for example, if you're doing a web pen test, you know, you could probably at least report something on the insecure headers and stuff like that, right? If you guys read uh, the email that I sent out recently, definitely jump on the email list if you're not on there already. But I shared a post from one of my members that uh, recently got a pen testing job about a year ago. And he was talking about how he, uh, he felt like an imposter on his web pen test because he's like, man, all I have is the insecure headers. I don't have anything. And he was about to give up, but he, he kept going and he found some interesting functionality with a, um, I think it was, uh, what was the component of it? Oh, a password reset functionality on the site. And he was tinkering around with that a little bit. And he found out that even though on the website, certain fields were grayed out with changing the password of like the administrator account, if you sent the request manually through Burp Suite uh, or basically not using the front-end UI, you could actually modify the parameters and reset the email of any user. So he reset, or sorry, reset the password of any user if you know their email. So he just went, did some OSINT on who the admins were on the co at the company. <laughs> and he put in one of the admins email addresses because he knew the structure of the of the accounts in that company. He knew it was like first name dot last name at company.com, right? And so he did that and he was able to reset the password of one of the admin accounts and then log into the site as the administrator, right? So that's an example of, um, you know, sometimes, sometimes you don't find anything. Sometimes you think that you're not gonna find anything. You might feel like an imposter, but you might be just around the corner from finding like, you know, having a lot of success, finding a really big vulnerability, right? So that's one such example there. And... You know, it, it could be such a thin margin, right? If he, he could have just stopped there. He was really close to quitting, right? He could have just quit there and then he would have felt like a failure or whatever. But just that one little extra step and boom, now he found this like huge thing, right? And that, that's the nature of the game as well. It's, um, you know, it's, it, it's hard, right? But that's what makes it so rewarding when you do find the cool stuff. But yeah, you don't need to be finding crazy stuff all the time. In fact, if you're working for an internal pen test team, one of the cases will be like, you might be pen testing a web application that's been tested like hundreds of times by other testers. And the change they added to the site might be very, very minuscule. And there might it might be so picked through that there's nothing to find. Like you gotta understand, some of these web apps have been pen tested like over a hundred times um, with each iteration. They just need to do it as part of compliance. Uh, so this thing has been tested and tested and tested. So all the like big vulnerabilities for the most part are probably already found not only by other pen testers on your team, but also by a bug bounty program. Like if it's an internet facing site, let's say it's on their main site or whatever. Well, that thing's probably been tested like over a hundred times and has bug bounty hunters testing it constantly. So when they turn you loose on the next pen test, unless they you know, add some groundbreaking functionality, super custom or whatever, you might not find much of anything interesting. Most pen tests, you don't find like, too much interesting stuff. Now, if you're testing something that's being tested for the first time, then you can have fun. And uh, let me tell you, a lot of times that's going to be easier than any CTF that you've ever done. Um, so I don't know. Do you want to call that hard? I don't know, chat. Would, would you call that hard, right? Let's say that you are pen testing a website. Let me give you a pretty common case. You're testing a website that's not particularly large. Like maybe there is like, Maybe there's like five web pages on the website. And there's not there's a few buttons and different stuff on the site, but there's really not that much functionality. And it's been tested like a hundred times. And like L30 was saying, maybe there's nothing really to find on it. Maybe there is, maybe there's not. We don't know, right? It's not a CTF. Would you call that hard? Or would you call that easy? I personally would call it easy. Uh, maybe some people would call it hard, 
But the reason that I would call it easy is if there's not really anything interesting to find, then you're doing your job as intended as long as you're testing the parameters and, you know, verifying everything, right? So I would consider that pretty easy. And that's a very common case on pen tests uh, for like if you're an internal pen tester. And then the other case, like I said, the other case is a web app or you know, maybe a, if you're doing an internal, like a network that's never been tested before. Those are a ton of fun. You're going to find so much stuff, but that's also really easy because it's never really been tested before. There's bugs like everywhere. There's vulnerabilities everywhere. You're probably going to have like admin on multiple servers within like an hour or two especially if you do CTFs. CTFs are so much harder. In, in both of these cases, I would argue that CTFs are a lot harder than real world. I really do believe that. And I've had coworkers that, have, that, that cannot, like, they could not solve these CTFs half as well as like probably all of you guys in my chat right now. And, and they're doing the job and they're staying at the company and, and the manager says they're doing a great job. So that's, that's the thing you guys got to realize. I think that a lot of people, you know, and it's it's easy to think this way as outside people looking in, right? Because you're doing everything in your power to to get a job in cybersecurity, right? You're putting in all this time, doing all these CTFs on Hack the Box, grinding out, like try Hack Me, CPTS, all this stuff, right? And you're looking at people that are in the field and you're like, man, if I'm doing all of this and I still can't get an interview, the people that are in cybersecurity, they must be ultra elite. But really, nothing can be farther from the truth. And I know that, like, you probably don't want to believe that. You probably think I'm, like, just saying that or whatever. But no, like, once you guys get in the field, look around. And then, and then message me back. Let me know what you guys think. Because the reality is that, like, most people in the field, they're not that technical. Cybersecurity is really huge. It's hard to get in. That's the challenge. And honestly, that's why I mentor people because that is the hardest part is getting into the field. But once you get into the field, it's just a nine to five job. 